Hello everybody, Board Game Lawyer here. Tonight I'm going to play some Marvel Champions from Fantasy Flight Games using one of my favorite heroes in the game, Spider-Woman. We're going to be taking her up against one of the newer uh, villains in the game. It's Mr. Sinister. Now I've only played Mr. Sinister in the campaign so far, and so tonight I'm going to play him just kind of as a standalone to see how he handles Spider-Woman by himself without his campaign included. And so let's take a look at Mr. Sinister. I'm going to be playing him in standard today. So he's got a scheme of two, an attack of one, is genius. And he also has a force response. After a status card is placed on Mr. Sinister, place one threat on the main scheme. All right, so we'll put Mr. Sinister out. He begins the game with 14 hit points. So there's the dial for Mr. Sinister. Let's take a look at his main scheme and see what this guy's all about. So the Sinister Intent says that we use Mr. Sinister 1 and 2. We also include three modular sets, Flight, Super Strength, and Telepathy, also Hope Summers, and the Standard Encounter Set. One modular encounter set, Nasty Boys, and so I'm going to use the recommended contents tonight. Let's take a look at our setup. The setup says to set the Flight, Super Strength, and Telepathy encounter sets aside. Put Hope Summers into play under the first player's control. All right, so let's take a look at Hope Summers. What's Hope all about? Now, Hope says that she is an ally with a thwart of star, an attack of star. The star says Hope Summers base thwart and base attack are equal to the thwart and attack of your hero. Okay, the setup says the first player controls Hope Summers. Hope Summers does not count against your ally limit, and if Hope Summers leaves play, the players lose the game. All right, so Hope Summers is under our control. We are the first player. We will remain the first player throughout the course of this solo game. So that's everything on side 1A for our setup. Uh, side 1B says that when revealed, remove one random stage 2 from the game, then advance to random stage 2A. All right, and that's it. That's all it says. So here we are. We've got uh, three random 2As. We'll shuffle those up, and one of these is just going to get tossed. We won't use it. It's going to go over there with 1A. So I'll just toss that one off. All right, and then so there's no text on side 2A, so we'll just flip it, and it says, when revealed, attach the telepathy attachment to Mr. Sinister and shuffle the rest of the telepathy encounter set into the encounter deck. When completed, advance the, to the other stage, 2A. If you cannot, advance to stage 3A. So we'll put 3A underneath the other 2A and set it over here for now. It gets two threat placed on it each turn. It begins with one threat on it. So there we go, and it threats out of five, so it's a very low threat threshold. Now I got to go find telepathy, and let's see, where's it at? Uh, it's over here, telepathy. Here's the telepathy attachment. Let's see what it says. It says that it's permanent. Attached villain gains the psionic trait and retaliate one. Ugh. After this, a character is attacked. Deal one damage to the attacking character. I hate that. I hate retaliate, so we're going to place that out there. He's got the psionic trait. I'm going to shuffle the other four cards into the encounter deck. So here's the encounter deck. We'll shuffle those in, and we'll get those all ready to go. And that is all the setup for Mr. Sinister. Now, Spider-Woman, she has a superhuman agility ability. And it says uh, that it is an interrupt. When you play an aspect card, Spider-Woman gets plus one thwart, plus one attack, and plus one defense until the end of the round. Limit once per round for each aspect. So she starts with one, 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 and they go up as I start playing aspects while she's in hero form. All right, let's take a look, though, at her alter ego form. Now, she's a double agent who has a recovery of three. She's a shield spy. And it says to choose two aspects instead of one during deck building. You must include an equal number of cards from those aspects in your deck. So I wanted to play with the brand new pool aspect today. So that's one of them. The other one that I'm going to pick is leadership. Now keep in mind that her hero kit has a couple of uh, leadership cards in it. So that'll kind of throw off your math from what you're used to when you're building your deck because you got to make sure that they're equal in number. And then the, her action is that she can look at the top card of any deck, and she can do this a limit of once per round. She begins the game with 11 hit points. So here's my Spider-Woman dial. We've got her pinged at 11. And I think that that's everything we need to know. Now, I do have some fancy counters over here to keep track of... Uh, 
keep track of what aspect she plays. And since I don't have one in the pool aspect yet, I'll just have to use something like that, like a... Don't tell anyone. Uh, an extra token. Okay, I think I got everything ready to go. Let me get a drink of my blue raspberry Kool-Aid here. Oh, it's winter time and my throat's dry. Hard to talk with a dry throat. 16, or 6 is our hand size. I wish it was 16. We've got uh, Venom Blast. We draw Inconspicuous. We also draw Contaminant Immunity, Energy, and the Triskelion. One, two, three, four, five, one more. And we draw Leadership Skill, which Leadership Skill says when an ally makes a basic thwart or basic attack, remove one Leadership Counter from here. That ally gets plus one thwart, plus one attack for that action. Of course, we got the Venom Blast, which is great. We got some resources to pay for that. Inconspicuous. So actually, with the way things are looking right now, I could play three different. Yeah. Huh. So how about I throw off Contaminant Immunity and maybe a Leadership Skill and draw two more cards as part of my mulligan. So they are, oh, the cut upper, deal five damage to an enemy, stun that enemy, love it. And then one more, finesse, ooh, this is a really good hand to begin the game with. I just wish I had enough to pay for everything. So if I spend two resources to put out finesse, yeah, I'm not going to be able to do everything I want to do. Man, I really got to do some damage to him though because of that telepathy. It's got that retaliate on it, so I'm going to have to rush at him with some big damage in order to maximize that retaliate. And then Hope Summer, she's not going to be much help because if she leaves play, the players lose the game. So taking damage from, from Mr. Sinister is not ideal right now. Um, so I could do lots of damage, though, to Mr. Sinister, and I think that that's, that's the idea. Yep, I'm going to... First off, use her action to look at the top card of any deck. So I'll look at the top card of the encounter deck, which is Sowing Discord. It's got two boost icons on it. Uh, it won't matter if he's stunned. Can he be stunned? Yes, he could be stunned. But if he's stunned, that places, yeah. So we have to keep that in mind that he has, uh, after a status card is placed on Mr. Sinister, place one threat on the main scheme. So, um... This is going to get thrown out on the table, this obligation here. Ooh, I don't like it at all, actually. Exhaust each ally you control. If no allies were exhausted this way, this card gains Surge. Whew. Okay, so... Yeah, that's the top card as an obligation that I don't like. I don't want it to come out. Hmm... So maybe I don't use the cut upper. Well, I just I just have to though. Yeah, I think so. Um, so we're gonna do five damage with the cup cut upper. Uh, deal five damage to an enemy and stun that enemy. He squeaks. Let's flip over to our hero form first, so that we get the benefit of the plus. So five damage onto Mr. Sinister is how we'll start. One, two, three, four, five. So he's down to nine. Yeah, down to nine. So we place uh so we play the pool aspect. So I'll put that token on her to represent that I played a, a pool, and we take one damage. So now we're down to ten. I think we do it again with the Venom Blast. Five damage to an enemy. Yep. So we're going to play an Aspect card. Do five more damage to Mr. Sinister. One, two, three, four, five. Now he's down to four. I take another damage. So now I'm down to nine. And one more attack. 
On to Mr. Sinister, I think so. So Spider Woman's going to attack Mr. Sinister to knock him down to one because she's plus two attack right now. I do take one more damage because of that, so we're really, really taking the retaliate. And he's stunned because of that cut upper, but that also adds another threat to the main scheme. Okay. And then Hope Summers, we're going to exhaust her to remove two threat off of focusing in. And she doesn't take any consequential damage. But that will be the end of my turn. Now if I flip, instead of him, yeah, he will use that... Uh, obligation as a as a scheme boost but then it's going to flip it's going to it's going to max out my focused in which i'm wondering if that's such a terrible thing at this point we'll get a hand size of 6 but we will end up with another yeah i think what i'm going to do this is my first turn i just flipped up I don't even know what I'm thinking. So I guess that's the way it just has to end. That's the end of the turn. So I draw up a hand size of five. So I draw Inspired, and I draw Pheromones, and I draw Contaminant Immunity, and Negasonic Teenage Warhead. When a treachery is revealed, deal two damage to a te Negasonic Teenage Warhead. Cancel that treachery's when revealed effects. And we have the Healing Factor. That's another good card. Wow, got some good cards this turn. All right, we're going to place two threat onto Focusing In. Two threat there. He's not going to attack us because he is stunned. And then we draw our encounter card, which we already saw what it is. It is Sowing Discord. Allies you control cannot ready. When revealed, exhaust each ally you control. If no allies were exhausted this way, this card gains Surge. The Ultra Ego action is to spend two mental resources to discard this card. Hmm. And uh, that's the end of his turn, which means that I clear my tokens here. My bonuses end. And now it's my turn. So Hope Summers cannot be ready. Exhaust each ally you control. If no allies were exhausted this way, this card gains Surge. And it says allies you control cannot ready. Ugh. Do I have two mental resources? I don't. So it ain't no sense me flipping down just yet. Inspired pheromones is good. Contaminant immunity. Heal three damage from Spider Woman. Give her a tough status card. I like that. Oh, yeah, I like that. So I can spend two to heal her. Yeah, I think I will. I'm going to spend, uh, yeah, two to heal her of three and I give her a tough status card so now she's back up to full strength whoops gotta go the other way full strength for the heal and she gets a tough status card and there it is now she's tough and then we can put inspired so because I played a green card, there's that. Now I could put Inspired onto Hope Summers. Hopefully in time we'll be able to get her ready back up again. Um, and so I played a blue leadership card. And now I can either remove threat and flip down and hope to try to free Hope Summers my next turn. Or I could ping Mr. Sinister and knock him to the next stage. What if I do this? Let's see. Two threat plus the... So it's, it's actually just going to... Even without drawing a boost, it's going to tip over the focus, focusing in. So how about I, I just stay up? Yep. I stay up. I'm going to exhaust her to do 
damage to Mr. Sinister, which is going to knock him down to zero. So that, that defeats stage one of Mr. Sinister. Stage two pops out. It comes out with 17 health. So I'll go ahead and set the dial right here now. 17. And he says, when revealed, place one threat on the main scheme. Two threat instead if Mr. Sinister has fewer than two superpower attachments. Oh, no. He's got fewer than two. So I placed two threat on the focusing in. So I didn't take that into consideration. That's going to go over anyway. Ugly. And yeah. Okay, well. Two, two superpower attachments. After a status card is placed on Mr. Sinister, place two threat on the main scheme. Mm. It's going. There's no way of stopping it now. Yeah, because I got to place two there at the beginning. So, yeah, punching Mr. Sinister and knocking him over basically pushed that one over the limit. So I'm going to ready Spider-Woman. She is tough, though, at least. Ready? Nope. Hope Summers cannot ready. Ending my turn, and I get to draw up a hand size of five cards. So I got Finesse. I got another Inspired card. I got Command Team. Another Command Team. And Self-Propelled Glide. Okay. I uh, got two mental resources, though. So that could be handy. And I can put out a command team. Yep. Yep, I could do that. So we'll just hang on to that. Um, so here we go. We place two threat onto the main scheme. Let's move this down a little bit. Kind of getting up in his business there. All right. So two threat onto the main scheme. So this is going to push that over the top. And out pops 2A. And 2A doesn't have any text on it, just like the other one didn't. So we're going to flip it over, and it says, Attach Super Strength Attachment to Mr. Sinister and shuffle the rest of the Super Strength Encounter set into the Encounter deck. Okay. So now he's bulking up. We place one threat on the back. Bulking up. Super Strength comes out. Super Strength says it's an attachment attached to villain. He's brute and steady. Steady requires two status cards of the same type to be stunned or confused. He's plus one attack. Shuffle these rest of these cards into the counter deck. There we go. Shuffle those in. And now Mr. Sinister is going to attack Spider Woman. Okay, and he attacks her for two, plus one is three, plus this one here, which is zero. That knocks her tough card off. And the encounter card is Shadow of the Past. Reveal your set aside Nemesis minion, put it into play, engage with you. Reveal your set aside Nemesis side scheme and put it into play. Shuffle the rest of your side scheme. Our set aside nemesis encounter set into the encounter deck. If your nemesis minion does not enter the game this way, this card gains surge. Here she is. Viper. Viper comes out. It says, while Viper is engaged with you, your hand size is reduced by one. And then here is her encounter. Or her side scheme. Viper's ambition. The rest of the cards are going to get shuffled in. Bunch of Hydra cards. Now, Viper's Ambition says, when revealed, place an additional one threat here. So three threat gets placed on Viper's Ambition. Mm. Oh, boy. Hand size reduced by one. Okay, Viper's Ambition. We're going to place three threat onto it. And that's the end of Mr. Sinister's turn. Now it's my turn. I've got the command team, which I think I'll put out. I'm going to spin the other command team 
and inspired. Right, yeah. To put out command team. Now command team uses three counters. So we'll put those out. And it says command team, exhaust command team, remove one command counter from it to ready an ally. Uh, so I play, played one. Played Spider Woman. Spider Woman. So he's going to, so that's going to, yeah, it's not going to matter. One, two, he schemes, and then Viper schemes. So I think I just do damage to Mr. Sinister. I can't do enough damage to Viper to knock her out. She's going to reduce my hand size, so that's not good. So Spider Woman's going to do two damage on the Mr. Sinister. Knocks him down to 15. I take one in retaliation because of that. I'm going to flip over to my alter ego form. And I'm going to use these two mental resources here to discard Sewing Discord. I really need to do that. And then um, I'm going to use my action to look at the top card of the encounter deck. And it is another obligation which will be used as a boost, so that's fine. Okay. That's going to end my turn, so we ready Jessica Drew, ready Hope Summers. We didn't use the command team. Viper is in play, and my hand size is reduced to five. So I get to draw another inspired card, Panda Pool, command team, Leadership skill and kid pool. Those are my five resources. Kid pool gains piercing. Okay. Placing two threat onto the bulking up. Two threat on bulking up. Mr. Sinister is going to scheme for two plus one plus that obligation card is five. So bulking up is now done. And what happens when I go to... It says, when completed, advance to stage 3A. So here's Sinister Ends. It reads, when revealed, deal each player one face-down encounter card. Oh, not another one. I've already got one extra one because of Viper's Ambition, so I'll just set it over here for now. And then we're going to flip this over, and it says, Sinister ends. Forced to interrupt. When Sinister attacks, he attacks Hope Summers instead. Other characters may defend the attack. If this stage is completed, the players lose the game. So it doesn't begin with any threat on it, but Viper is going to place two more on it because she now schemes. And I get dealt three encounter cards. Oh, boy. Okay. That says, when Mr. Sinister attacks. So it's only Mr. Sinister, not the Viper. All right, so Viper's ambition is going to cause us to get an additional encounter card. So here's one, two, and three encounter cards. Let's look at the first one that was dealt to us. It's Sinister Schemes. Mr. Sinister Schemes, if he has a psionic trait, you are confused. He does have the psionic fate, uh, trait, so I am confused. And Mr. Sinister is going to scheme for one, two, three, plus this one right here, four, five. So he schemes for five. The Sinister ends. This stage is completed. The players lose the game. Well, well, well. Mr. Sinister, he did his homework. Yep. Let's see what else. He would have had the thrown object attached to the villain. Attached villain's attacks gain ranged. Force response after the villain attacks. Discard this card would be an attack of plus three. The other boost card that was dealt was Ruckus, who is a teamwork. Nasty boy. When revealed, stun each character you control. All of those cards would have been bad. I don't think 
I don't think I would have stood much of a chance anyway with those other encounter cards. But Mr. Sinister does his sinister deeds. He schemes out. And that's how we're going to lose the game. I'm going to lose the game confused. Because things just... The wheels came off the wagon on that one. That was pretty quick. I'm going to have to try this one again. That was... Uh, that was fun. Um, Mr. Sinister is no joke, actually. And the pool aspect, I tried to rush at him, and he's like, no, nah, we're not having any of that. Um, I'm going to retaliate on you, and then I'm going to have super strength, and I'm going to bring my Hydra friends. We're going to knock Hope out for a while. Yeah, that was... I don't know if it, I don't, that's brutal or not, but it's close as I can get this evening. And so, uh, anyhow, thanks for watching my playthrough today. Sorry I lost this one for you. I would have liked to have had a chance here on stage two of Mr. Sinister, but he just uh, he just did really well. So, anyhow, if you like watching my videos, please give me a like or subscribe even. Then you can watch new videos as they come out. You can catch me on Discord or you can catch me on uh, Facebook. I am the Board Game Lawyer. Uh, you can also catch me on YouTube and Twitch. I, I'd live play some some games over on Twitch, and I'm getting ready to start um, kind of a neat series where I'm going through all the cards in the game. And uh, I'll talk more about that on a future episode. But anyhow, thanks for watching this evening. Hope you uh, have a great evening, and I'll, bring, and I'll hope to bring you another video again extremely soon. But until then, take care, friends. Goodbye.